Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for being here. It's a very special day to have you all here together. Uh, to start, I would like to dedicate my bat mitzvah to my beloved son, Jonathan, my dear parents, Matib and David Haddad, and to the two men who very sadly lost their lives during a shooting in Jerba, where I was visiting and exploring my father's birthplace last May. The Haftarah portion I just read from Isaiah is the fifth of seven portions of consolation. After the cataclysmic event of the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE and of Jerusalem by Titus, the grief of the people was such that it was compared to a grieving barren woman and to the mourning widow, widow who is bereft of her husband. The people were chased out of their beloved city of Jerusalem and went into exile in Babylon and different parts of the Roman Empire, mourning the devastating loss of the temple, which we still mourn to this day. Incidentally, both the first and second temples were destroyed on the same day of the ninth of the month of Av, the worst day on the Jewish calendar. However, wherever the people went, they took God with them and transported with them the symbols of the temple to their homes. For instance, the table became an extension of the altar. The candles that we light every Shabbat and for every Yom Tov or holiday are reminiscent of the eternal light that shines in the temple day and night without interruption. And the two braided lo loaves of six braids of challah symbolize the 12 tribes. But the most seminal change after the destruction of the temple it was that the sacrifices were no more and were replaced by prayers. Our first prayer book was born and that's what we still wish today. The message of this portion, the Haftarah, that we read after the, the Torah, is the everlasting mercy of God who promises never to get angry with the people and asks us to imitate his way of loving kindness. So God gave us mitzvot. They are usually translated as commandments, but the way I see them, or I understand them, I, tra I translate them as acts of kindness to fulfill on a daily basis. The men were endowed with 613 of them, and possibly more. The women, the women had their share too, less than men, but not, no less important, as they had different imperatives. These are the, the many supermen and women I had the privilege of knowing and able personally. Hashem gave us the Torah, which is the law with a big L, a code of ethical and moral behavior, and the justice system that from the Ten Commandments and beyond, most of the world follows today, demanding of us to always pursue justice. So he gave us the mitzvot, or instructions, at, as, as uh, how to get to that level of holiness. More than commandments, the word mitzvot means for me duty and acts of kindness at the same time. The highest kind of act of kindness being anonymous. One is to seek and precede the mitzvah before being asked. And, do, and to do so, and do so anonymously, not for our personal glory, but by being of service to others while serving God and getting closer to God at the same time in doing so. He even asks us to love our enemies because kindness has the power to transform a life 
and by extension, to transform the world. Remember Jean Valjean in Les Miserables and how the priest's act of kindness transformed his life forever? I am filled with hope when I see people today sharing their goodness with others around me and in countries such as America and Israel to name just a couple where their people are some of the most generous in the world. In my childhood, <coughs> in my childhood I've been privileged to witness extraordinary actions from my parents. For instance, when I saw them take a couple of homeless older people from the streets into our home, gave them hot shower, clean clothes, fed them, and gave out their own bedroom for a year so they could sleep in a bed. I was a silent witness of this selfless, beyond generous act of kindness. They never asked for anything in return ever, and they repeated the same kindness for one of my own aunts later on and her husband, and I'm leaving out so many other instances. The, love, the God I love is the God my parents had in their hearts and how they acted in His name. I love the compassionate God who asks us to take care of the poor, the orphan, the widow, and the visiting stranger. He is the one I carry with me. I tend to learn more from people, from their actions, than from their words. And when the two are in alignment, you know you are facing the genuine, real ones. I find, okay, I find that those who carry God in their lives, no matter what their face, shine their goodness the same way. It is truly visible in their radiant faces. Why did I want a bat mitzvah at my age? It says, it says that it is the age of maturity where at age 12 for a girl and 13 for a boy, we know right from wrong, and therefore, from that, that point on, we take responsibility for our actions and for our words. In my journey, I have learned a lot, but feel that I'm still a work in progress. And not only on Yom Kippur do I review my behavior and actions and continue to learn from my faith, and from others. It is not always easy to be kind and to do God's bidding, but as long as we keep trying and grow from where we were to where we are now, and always going forward, we are on the right path. Also because by, in my journey, my life journey, I have crossed and lived on three different continents exposed to many cultures and eight languages, and throughout all of it, the, the only constant was my faith. It was and is an indelible part of my identity. It's in my DNA. In today's modern time, the mostly global culture has shifted, and women rightfully want the same benefits men always get naturally. So as a modern woman, I am claiming the same. In Tunisia, where I spent the first nine years of my life, the bar, bar mitzvah boy was only, it was only for boys and we girls, but at the time we did not resent it at all because it was our tradition, long tradition. My father, I remember, prepared my brothers for months to learn reading and chanting correctly from the Torah. And when a bar mitzvah got close, uh, the date of a bar mitzvah, the day, uh, you could feel the anticipation in the air. The whole neighborhood was in effervescence. The friends and family pitched in. The women were cooking. Everything was made from scratch. From the first time, the bar mitzvah boy had a new suit made by a tailor. Everyone wore new clothes. First it was the boy reading from the Torah at the altar in an overcrowded synagogue. And when it was done, you could hear the women ululating, as you just heard my sister, so um, for enjoy, we ululate when there's a joyous, auspicious occasion. 
and um, And, and then at the end of the service, the Torah service, everybody from upstairs or downstairs showered the bar mitzvah boy with candy. This is what uh, the tradition, I try to carry a little bit of it today. So, um, Okay, so they showered the boy with an avalanche of candy. Then came the abundant luncheon and pastries. Nothing was good enough, and we'd be mortified if anything was missing. If it were one of my brothers, uh, bar, bar mitzvah, the, uh, if it were one of my brothers, bar, the bar mitzvah boy, the, oh, in the evening came the reception. So that's when the party really started. Um, I had an uncle who was a, um, a leader of an orchestra, an oriental orchestra. By oriental, we mean North African. Okay. And we had all of the instruments from North Africa. And he, as a, as a musician, he played the violin and the lute. My father played the lute. And um, he had a lineup of performers and belly dancers. And uh, he had them all lined up, all glamour on stage. And the atmosphere rose several degrees when the music started, not to mention the buha, which is our national drink. Uh, I prefer national drink. It was flowing and a free adult was happy. Everyone showed up, not only the invited guests, but also kids from the neighborhood and beyond. People arrived if they wanted to be part of it. So I didn't know there was an expression of crashing the party until I came to America. Ah. <laughs> In Tunisia, everybody had to be part of a joyful occasion. It was also there, but 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 bar mitzvah too. It was sheer joy shared by all. This is what I also wanted for my congregation and friends to feel in preparation of my own bat mitzvah today. This is your bat mitzvah too. Boy, did they answer the call in a big, huge way. So I'll give them their due at, at the end of my speech. Uh, preparing for today, it was amazing. However, a sad event, while I was in uh, Jerba, Tunisia, uh, a sad event changed the tenor of my bat mitzvah and took on a deeper dimension when I visited my native land in May. It was the first time in 60 years that I returned. I waited a long time for that day. So I had two items on my bucket list that I really wanted to materialize and realize. So one was to have my bat mitzvah finally at this point in my life and the other was to return to my homeland. So it was an emotional return for me. I nearly kissed the ground when I arrived. I was also discovering the island of Jerba, where my father was born, raised, educated, worked, and prayed as a young man. Every year, there is a religious festival for Rabbi Bar, Bar Yochai, in the month of May, a sort of pilgrimage that brings Tunisian Jews from the four corners of the planet, but also all people from different nationalities and faith to attend these happy two days on the grounds of one of the most ancient synagogues that's called like Reba, that dates from the 6th century BCE. 
I could feel the centuries of mysticism and faith in this beautiful white and blue shul synagogue with gleaming woods and a bima or altar like no other. You really have to see that. Uh, I have pictures, but you can get online and see it also uh, under the name of like Riba. It was the central location of this festival. There was, of course, Tunisian everything. The language, the music, the terrific sound of the darbuka, our national drum, the food, uh, the Judeo-Tunisian language of my parents, which is also my cradle language, the singing, the smiles, the happy faces, the cheerful energy. I was home again. For our protection, security was overkill. Hundreds and hundreds of policemen, guards, armed to the teeth with assault weapons and even tanks being present. On the last day, as I was leaving the grounds, two minutes before the crowd exited, one of the National Guard disposed of his nearby colleague, I will spare you the details of how, stole his weapons and started shooting in a crowd. Several people fell victims of this single man's folly. Among them, two men who ironically bore my sa the same last name as mine. Maybe, maybe they were distant cousins, I'll never know. The local security of officials never expected one of their own would be the perpetrator. When the anger and the sadness takes over, it is oftentimes humanly difficult to think how kindness can, can change some people who do these things, no matter what their motives. My best response to that fateful event was through having my bat mitzvah, reaffirming my faith, and to renew my covenant with God. I grieved for those two good, decent, decent men and still more them, but we need to continue being God's good soldiers, and even in the midst of the tunnel of, of our world, it is given to us the choice to be the hope and power to create a better, kinder, and more loving world here and now. Although, I didn't want to sound like Bush, by the way, when I said that. Um, so, um, although I often struggle um, and wrestle with God, actually, my connection with God is mostly a debate. And I ask a lot of questions. The rabbi will tell you something about that. <laughs> but it is still the presence that's been with me all my life. So it's like a companion that that travels with me through my life. So, but I want to say to never lose hope, never surrender to apathy or despair, as change is already happening around us. I can see the change almost every day. I can see good, kind, generous, and involved people around me each day do their share, either as activists, humanists, or as observant believers of God, everyday men and women, his faithful soldiers doing the mitzvot he gave to all of us to bring about the age of redemption with Mashiach Tzidkenu. Let's be joyous in doing our mitzvot and doing what makes Hashem smile. Mazel Tov and Shabbat Shalom. I would be absolutely unforgivable if I were not to mention uh, my congregation, my friends, all who help in bringing and making this mitzvah happy in no particular order. I thank from the bottom of my heart Rabbi Maimon for his guidance and always of responding to my text messages. To Kentor Marla Barugel, my chanting guru, for her expertise and passion in preparing me.
to read Hebrew without vowel from the Torah and from chanting, uh, to Ruth Herman, my role model, for being the first to offer her help, for Murray Pollock for his gentle and positive disposition and for always saying yes. For Darlene Rose, my general supervisor, who has the biggest loving heart of all. For Beverly Emus, contagious enthusiasm, who really got into the spirit of the auspicious occasion, of the Simcha. To Mel Chazen, who assisted me with books and who endured my multiple phone calls to get some explanations. To Kathy and Gohar for always being there when I need her. And for sweet and funny Fran Goodside, who has a devilish sense of humor and who right away asked me how she could assist me. For Carol Levine, for the centerpieces, and the lady transporter of, of goods and giver of huge hugs. For Karen Sands, for her constant moral support and her courage even when not feeling well. For Joan Smith, sweetness, who asked for a job to do and was given one very important. For Sa Sally Keen, the balloon lady, who ran that errand for me, and for Alberta Karch, who kindly offered to assist me where there was a need. For lovely Linda Rich, who doesn't need to learn about kindness, she is kindness itself. For Jeff Sachs, the big mother <laughs> who learned new electronic skills to facilitate the Hebrew to English reading. For kind and quiet Mark Kogorbinski for setting the room along with the custodians and who volunteered his assistance wherever I needed it. And last but not least for Lisa and Howard Brass who helped, which is just about everything, in setting the room. Thank you all. I promise I'm almost done. <laughs> uh, thank you all so very much. You are mitzvot. You are acts of kindness, emotion. That's what you are. And to all of you attending my special day here today, and from my sister Sylvia in Pennsylvania, my nieces Ruth and Lebanon, they made it. My friend Ariel from France, who by their presence turned my bat mitzvah into an international event. And to all who are present here and on Zoom, even if I could not, if, even if you could not make it in person, it is my delight to have you all here. I am honored by your presence. That's my biggest gift. Mazel tov, Shabbat shalom. May your eyes shine with the light of God, and your face be radiant as the brightness of the sky.
Abraham. Abraham was about to be born. Abraham, Padre querido, Padre bendito, Luz de Israel. Abraham, Padre querido, Padre bendito, Luz de Israel. El compadre y también a Noel, y que por sus detus nos venga el Goel y rima a todo Israel, cierto lo haremos al verdadero. Abraham, bien, un padre querido, padre bendito, luz de Israel. Padre bendito, luz de Israel. La mujer de tierra quedó preñada. Día en día él le preguntaba: ¿De qué tenés la cara tan demudada? Ella ya sabía el bien que tenía. Ahora me vino, Padre querido, Padre bendito, luz de Israel. Ahora me vino, Padre querido, Padre bendito, luz de Israel. Padre querido, Padre bendito, luz de Israel.
Hi, hi. 